From humble beginnings as an assistant bookkeeper, this man defied all odds to become the first ever billionaire in America. His unwavering work ethic and business savvy led to an unimaginable fortune, which he later chose to give away. Today, he remains the wealthiest self-made man in the world with a net worth of over $400 billion, owning not only to one of the world's largest oil companies, but also prime real estate properties such as the University of Chicago. But this success story did not come easily, as poverty and struggle throughout his early years caused the world's first billionaire to consider money one of the hardest things to possess. However, the determination and the plan he followed made him the world's first self-made billionaire. This video is his story. In July 1893, a young boy named Johnny was born. His early life was characterized by the hardships and struggles that often accompany a modest upbringing. Growing up in a working-class family, he experienced firsthand the challenges of making ends meet he had an absent father who was often regarded as a con artist who sold paltry potions. His mother, on the other hand, was a religious woman who taught John the value of hard work and money. To help provide for the family, he took on odd jobs, including selling potatoes and raising turkeys. It was during these formative years that Rockefeller developed an unwavering work ethic and a thirst for knowledge qualities that would later play a crucial role in his remarkable ascent to wealth and power. At the age of 14, in 1853, John Rockefeller and his family moved to Cleveland, Ohio, hoping for a better life. He began working for a farm, but disliked the amount of physical labor required. He then attended Folsom's Mercantile College, where he studied bookkeeping and transaction practices. He graduated in 1855 and started looking for bookkeeping positions around the city. After several failed attempts to secure a job, he was hired as an assistant bookkeeper by a merchant company named Hewitt and & Tuttle and started participating in trading ventures. At the age of 16, Rockefeller left Hewitt & Tuttle to begin on his business path since to work as an assistant bookkeeper paid just 50 cents a day, which he wasn't happy with. He started his first business venture with Maurice B. Clark. They invested $4,000 in total to start the Clark & Rockefeller Company, a small produce and commodities firm. The two budding businessmen made significant profits selling meats, grain and hay to the federal government during the American Civil War. Even in those days, it was clear that Rockefeller possessed a keen eye for opportunities. He was known for being a savvy businessman who always sought new business opportunities to expand his profits. In August 1859, Edwin Drake drilled the first oil well in Titusville, Pennsylvania, and in the mid-19th century, the oil boom swept across the United States, transforming it into a valuable and a sought-after resource. Recognizing the industry's immense potential, Clark and Rockefeller partner with Samuel Andrews to establish an oil refining business. The company's name was then changed to Rockefeller and Andrews after Rockefeller bought out Clark's interest in 1865. Rockefeller's path to riches truly began when he entered the oil industry. During that time, the oil industry was still new and Andrews and Rockefeller had a plan to stabilize oil prices. They signed a partnership agreement with Oliver H. Payne one of the largest competitors in the Cleveland oil industry, and started the Standard Oil Company in January 1870. What set Rockefeller apart from his contemporaries was his visionary approach to business. He realized that controlling every aspect of the oil industry, from production to distribution, would give him unprecedented power and influence. Through a combination of shrewd acquisitions, vertical integration and strategic partnerships, Rockefeller swiftly consolidated his control over the oil market. In 1871, recognizing the chaotic and volatile nature of the oil industry, Rockefeller and his partners devised a strategic plan to address the inconsistent pricing and gain greater control over the refining sector. Over the course of the following decade, Rockefeller embarked on a relentless pursuit to consolidate the fragmented oil refining companies. 
His goal was to absorb these companies and establish a cohesive and efficient operation that would revolutionize the industry. In a shrewd move, he offered his competitors a stake in the newly formed Standard Oil Company. The amount of stock allocated to each competitor was equivalent to the value of their respective firms. In some instances, rather than completely absorbing competitors as businesses, Rockefeller invited the owners to join the Standard Oil Company. These competitors turned colleagues were offered management positions, leveraging their expertise and industry knowledge, strengthening the company's operations and market position. The results of Rockefeller's strategic maneuvers were astonishing. Within a remarkably short period, Rockefeller successfully integrated or acquired the majority of the oil refineries in Cleveland, solidifying Standard Oil Company's dominance in the industry. The once disjointed and volatile market was now under the control of a single, influential entity. Rockefeller's next business move was to expand the reach of Standard Oil Company outside of Ohio. He entered into agreements with railroads to reduce transportation costs and began merging with oil refinery firms in Pennsylvania. Rockefeller also acquired the majority of Empire Transportation Company's assets, including pipelines, tank cars, and New York Harbor terminals. Rockefeller's existing deal with the Pennsylvania Railroad, which transported over half of Standard Oil's shipments, laid the foundation for further negotiations with major railroads such as the Erie Railroad, Baltimore and Ohio, and New York Central. These agreements attracted railroad companies by guaranteeing a consistent volume of oil shipments, providing them with steady business. Through these strategic railroad negotiations, Rockefeller was able to secure valuable rebates, allowing him to cut down transportation costs for his company's shipments. This made it difficult for competitors to match Standard Oil's prices, further solidifying Rockefeller's market dominance. By 1878, he controlled 90% of the nation's oil refineries. More importantly, this relentless drive for optimization propelled him to become an oil tycoon by the age of 40, a remarkable achievement considering he has only been in the business for 10 years. In 1882, the Standard Oil Trust was established as a means of achieving horizontal integration. The trust was a complex legal arrangement in which nine trustees, including Rockefeller, transferred their shares in various oil companies to a single board of trustees. In exchange, they received trust certificates that entitled them to a proportionate share of the trust's profits. The trust effectively placed the control of numerous oil companies under the management of a single entity, with Rockefeller as the dominant figure. This allowed for centralized decision-making, coordination of operations, and the elimination of wasteful competition among the constituent companies. However, over the next decade, Standard Oil became more aggressive in its business tactics, which ultimately led to the downfall of the company's monopoly. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Standard Oil had achieved unprecedented control over the oil industry, stifling competition and exerting significant influence over prices and market conditions. Concerns began to mount regarding Standard Oil's business practices, which were seen as anti-competitive and detrimental to smaller businesses. The first major blow to Standard Oil came with the enactment of the Sherman Antitrust Act in 1890. These policies aim to promote fair competition, prevent the formation of monopolies and protect consumer interests. Although the Sherman Act did not specifically mention Standard Oil, it provided a legal basis to challenge and dismantle monopolies. Following the Sherman Act, the US government took action against Standard Oil. In 1906, the federal government filed a lawsuit under the Act, accusing Standard Oil of violating antitrust laws through various means, including predatory pricing, secret rebates, and unfair business practices. The legal battle culminated in the landmark case of Standard Oil Company of New Jersey versus United States, also known as the Standard Oil Breakup Case, in 1911. The Supreme Court ruled that Standard Oil had engaged in illegal monopolistic practices. As a result, the company was ordered to dissolve the trust and break up into 34 separate independent companies. Despite the dissolution of the Standard Oil Company, John D. Rockefeller continued to amass significant profits. 
The emergence of automobiles led to a resurgence in oil demand, and with Henry Ford making the Model T affordable for the middle class, the oil industry experienced a booming period. However, Rockefeller, who had retired by then, gradually reduced his involvement in the Standard Oil office and eventually retired in the late 1890s. In his later years, he devoted himself to philanthropy, leaving an indelible mark on in society. Guided by the belief that wealth should be used for the betterment of humanity, Rockefeller established numerous foundations and charitable organizations. One of his most significant philanthropic endeavors was the creation of the Rockefeller Foundation in 1913. The foundation aimed to promote global health, advance scientific research, and address societal issues. It played a vital role in eradicating diseases like hookworm, yellow fever, and malaria. Additionally, Rockefeller's philanthropic efforts focused on education, supporting the foundation of institutions such as the University of Chicago and Spelman College. The story of John D. Rockefeller is more than a tale of riches. It's a testament to the extraordinary capacity of an individual to shape industries, transform society, and leave a lasting impact on the world. His strategic insight, innovative thinking, and unwavering determination set him apart as a true titan of the oil industry. John D. Rockefeller's journey, from modest beginnings to becoming the richest man in the world, serves as a reminder that success is not merely measured in wealth, but also in the positive influence one can have on the lives of others.